we're talking about your thinking, some of, these, some of your thoughts you need to freeze and, and bust them and get them out of your mind. We're talk, talking about thinking. The Bible uh, talks a whole lot about our thinking. And I really want to name the series Stinking Thinking because some of us have wrong thoughts all the time. And I'm not a psychologist, but the Holy Spirit is. I mean, I, he's, I'm not a scientist, but the Holy Spirit is. I'm not an inventor, but the Holy Spirit is. I'm not a mathematician, but the Holy Spirit is. He's the creator of all things, and he lives on the inside of you. And so he wants to counsel you, help you. Matter of fact, Jesus called him our counselor, our helper, our advocate. Uh, he's for us always. He's with us always. He never leaves us nor forsakes us. And we sang about the presence of God today. And uh, we'll talk just, we'll hit that a minute or two, but God's always with you. But your thinking is not on God, so therefore your focus is not on God, and therefore you forget that God is with you. See how that works? And, and the, a covenant word is remember, 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 remember my word, remember what I did, remember, remember, because it's easy to forget, especially when pressure comes. And how many know pressure comes? And so the, the word has a lot to say, and uh, we, we're not going to hit everything, but uh, Proverbs 23, 7, as a man thinks in his heart, so he is. You go as far, you will go in life as far as you're thinking. Well, pastor, I'm just no good, and you know, I don't think God's for me, and you know, you won't find any of that in the Bible. So you need to change your thinking today. Let's begin, as we start tearing these things down, these are called strongholds. This is called spiritual warfare. We think spiritual warfare is out there over Washington, over Russia. Spiritual warfare is right here. This is your spiritual warfare. You're in a battle, and the devil's after you. You know, our baseline is love, joy, peace, gentleness, kindness, meekness. And the fruits of the Spirit's our baseline. Guess what? The devil's trying to get your thinking that, and get you out of the baseline of the fruits of the Spirit. Every time you fight with your wife, it's the enemy coming in and trying to get you out of love. You ever thought about that? Well, I can't believe that woman did that again. Oh, oh. Huh? That's the enemy. You don't let anybody, not even your spouse or your kids, in this holy place. This is the holy place. You have a holy place where, where Jesus resides, where the Spirit of God resides on the inside of you, and your thinking affects it. God's a gentleman. He doesn't come in and warp your mind and make you think like he thinks. He wants you to submit to him because he loves you, and he wants you to love him back. And he wants you to follow him and to learn his will. A lot of people say, I got questions. When I get to heaven, I got some questions for God. Guess what? He's got some questions for you. Why didn't you read my word? Why didn't you live my word? Why didn't you be led by my spirit? But you lived your whole life in your own head. So that's going to answer the questions, why this happened and why that happened. You wasn't following me. I was trying to get you to avoid that, but you were headstrong, said, I'm going to do it anyway. You ever met somebody like that? So let's, let's, let's look. Transforming our mind. Uh, some think, uh, listen to this, some think while they talk. Some think before they talk, some talk then think, and some people don't think at all. That's a joke. Come on, a little catch up with me there. So, so uh, guess what? We, we've been trained to think like the world. And, and I hate to tell you this, you've been trained to think like your parents and grandparents because they influenced you your whole life. But we want to think like Jesus. We want to think what the... The Father's. The Father's thoughts towards us are good. Huh? God has a hope and a future for us. That's where we need to step into. Not what mama said to do, or grandma said to do, or grandpa said to do, or what your boss tells you to do. You need to step into the spiritual realm with God and do what God calls you to do. You still got to have a baseline. You got to have a job. We're going to work. But you know what? Let's work with God. Let's invite God to work with us. Let's, let's invite God in our parenting. Let's change our thinking. You know, this is the way it's got to be done. No, every kid's different. Ask God how to deal with your children. Ask the Holy Spirit. 
He knows what will penetrate their heart. You ever heard the, the uh, thinking, you know, uh, garbage in, garbage out? What, what you hear will go into your mind and go into your heart, and it will either bring fear or faith. So you need to be partaking of faith. Hmm? We don't eat dirt for a reason. There's no value in it. There's no value in fear. Come on, we need to believe God. Y'all, y'all uh, listen, I, 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 I follow John Maxwell, I follow Billy Graham, I follow a bunch of people. Uh, you know, you can go on back in history and you can look at their quotes and sayings, but this is a John Maxwell quote. The difference between people who win and the people who whine. People who whine want to feel good before they do something. People who win do something and then feel good. Get up. Get in the Word. Pray. Be led. You know, we, we've got, we got to follow God. So if, here's, here's another thought. If God came down, and, and God's with you always, He hears everything you say, and He knows every thought, every ugly one and every good one, and He still loves you. But let me ask you this. If God listened to your conversation, would He want to hang out with you? Are you a whiner? Complainer? Yeah. Are you Eeyore? If it's going to happen, it's going to happen to me. Always bad happens to me. Uh-uh, uh-uh. We got to change our thinking. God said, I have a future and a hope for you. And when you get in that whining stage and that complaining stage, you know, I don't know, Lord, why it was 70 last week. Now it's the 28 this morning. I just don't know, what are you doing? And you've made these grass burrs and these ants, and I mean, they're in my house. And you just complain and complain and complain. And then I, I listen to somebody, and there's a scale, uh, and we think it's one scale, and you're complaining down here, and then you're flourishing up here, but there's two different scales. Which one are you living on? Are you living on the whining scale, or are you in the, in the faith scale, which is up here, which is, and the world calls it positive thinking. And it's still spiritual. I mean, the world takes the, the biblical things, and they, they prove them that they're real and they're good, but they just don't want to mix God with it. Our advantage is that we can mix the Word of God with it. And really become a success. And so, uh, let, let's read, uh, we're going to read the scripture, but let, before we do, I want to remind you. And I've said this before, and I learned it 30, 40 years ago. You're a born again child of God. Most of you in here, if you're not, today's the day of salvation for you. Jesus told Nicodemus, you must be born again. He's like, in his head, how can a man go back into his mother's womb? Jesus was talking about his spirit, must be recreated. So as we read this, I want to remind you, your spirit is the king of your life. Your soul, your mind, your will, and emotions should be your servant. It shouldn't rule. This shouldn't rule. This should not rule because it will lead you astray. And your body needs to be your slave. I, I always still want to bring the two-year-olds in here and put some M&Ms around here. And just the bowls of them say you can only have one, and you'll watch their flesh take over. And that's just, that's flesh. They're children. That's why they got to be trained. They have to be trained. We have to continually train ourselves to think God's thoughts, to, to control our flesh. Because you know what? I can eat as many donuts as you can. I, I will accept the challenge. That's my flesh. And so we have to deal with our flesh, and we have to control our mind. And so Romans 12, 1, it says, I beseech you, therefore, brethren, that listen up to me. By the mercies of God, that you present your body as a living sacrifice, wholly acceptable to God, which is your reasonable service. And do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. This is the, this is the key phrase. This is what the Spirit of God is trying to say. Be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Your mind will drift, especially when you get tired. You go back to the old ways. When we get weary and we get under stress, we go back to the old ways where we just gonna, we're just going to choose somebody out. That's the old way. And so we have to stay fresh. We have to get sleep. We have to, we have to eat right. You know, and science say, well, sugar really doesn't affect you. Oh, yes, it does. I got grandkids. I know. And I'm like, boy. and. And, and the oldest one was running around. I'm like, you're on sugar. What, you, what are you eating? 
and he had a pile of candy, and he was sticking the, the wrappers underneath the couch, and he was enjoying himself. That's our flesh. That's us. But we have to eat right to be able to control ourselves. We have to get good rest because we tend to go back. You don't make decisions when you're tired, when you're angry. You, you, you need to chill out and get, get in with God and, and fellowship. But transform our mind that you may prove. Everybody say prove. What is the good, acceptable, and perfect will of God? So number one, we're transformed as we renew our mind. We are looking for transformation. We don't want to stay the same. I don't want to stay the same as where I'm at right now. I want to continually be transformed, and I need to renew my mind, and I need to stay renewed, and I need to stay fresh with God. Uh, you know, I, I laugh at my wife. She's back working with the kids probably somewhere. But if the bread's been open, she wants to know how long it's been open because she wants fresh bread. How about having a fresh, Jesus said, I'm the bread of life. How about having some fresh bread with them? But we live on, well, I got saved back in 1973, and, and the Lord touched my life, and I haven't done anything for him since, and I really had, he's been an afterthought. That's not the way it's supposed to be. We're supposed to have a continual relationship with God, a fresh relationship with him, and be transformed. A transformed mind will transform your life. Transform people, transform cities. Now, now, you know what? If we want to transform our city, we got to be transformed. We got to take a stand on the word. We can't back up. If you want to change your life, if you've been told that you're no good, you're not this, you're not that, you can be transformed. Don't let that in your heart. Matter of fact, dig that out. Dig that out of your mind and, and replace it with what Jesus said. Jesus, for God so loved you that he sent Jesus to die for you. You are somebody. You are worthy. You are more than a conqueror. You are uh, to be transformed. Well, I'm not that, Pastor. Then be transformed. Start today when your transformation with God. Well, I'm still dealing with drugs. You know what? God knows you're dealing with drugs. He still came to help you be free from drugs. I'm still dealing with lust. Well, you know what? Everybody deals with lust. One of my favorite preachers, a lady on his, her husband was on his board, and she goes, he's got a demon. He's got a demon. All he wants is S-E-X. Morning, noon, and night. He goes, well, I can't get rid of that because I got that too, woman. I'm sorry. <laughs> Part of being a man, you have to control it. You have to put it under the feet of Jesus. Even uh, women deal with it. Alcohol, drugs, whatever you're dealing with. Anger. Man, some people get mad at the drop of a hat and they'll drop their own hat. Uh-huh. All these things, that, 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 that's where our minds need to be transformed. And uh, in, in 2 Corinthians 5, 17 says, Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he's a new creation. And man, I forgot my, my, my helper this morning, but next Sunday he'll be here, so be ready. And, and uh, our, our old man, our old flesh, our old life always wants to come back on us. All these things, but we're a new creation. Everybody say, I'm a new creation. In Christ Jesus, I'm new. And you know what? Here, here, we all like a new car. You ever get a new car, that new car smell? And they even invent that smell. You can put it in your 1968 Comet, and you can still have that new car smell. But how many of you know the Bible says heaven's new? Always. God's new always, and God needs to be new in our lives. And so uh, if, 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 if think it's in your notes, if it's not, uh, you might want to write it down, but look, thoughts lead to words. Your thoughts will lead to words. Your words lead to actions. Your actions lead to habits, and habits form character. So thoughts, words, actions, habits, and character, and then it's destiny. Our destiny is not here. Our destiny is eternity. Quit living for here. Start living for God. Let's go to number two. Repentance means a change of mind. To repent, and we're going to break it down just for a second. The way you think is repentance. If you, you know what, if you get on the interstate, you know, if you miss, if you're going west and you miss the last exit, you got to go 10 miles before you turn around. Woo! Don't miss that exit. 
You got to go 10 miles. You got to go all the way to rural retreat before you can turn around. But you need to turn around. Maybe you've been going too long the wrong way. Today's the day to turn around. Today's the day to renew your mind. You know, I'm, gonna, I'm, I make a, I'm taking a stand. I'm going to quit that today. I'm going to take a stand. Uh, repentance is heartfelt sorrow over sin. And it, and, and it takes us into a shift and a change in reality when we repent. A shift in reality. We get discouraged. People that have, have dealt with alcohol, they go back to alcohol because they're discouraged. They had some setback. Because that's their go-to. Your go-to should be the Holy Spirit. Your go-to should be the Word of God. Your go-to should be what God has said about you. Man, I, I got something burning up in me that's coming. You better, listen, it's more important to be than to do. Any man be in Christ, he's a new creation. It's more important to be than do. What we got to do, I got to do this, I got to do that. And we're trying to make ourselves be a good person, but you're supposed to just be. Just be in Christ. Just step into Jesus. Come on. He, he wants to help you be in him. He wants to help you be a new creation. He wants to help you. It's not your works that's going to get you to heaven. It's your being. Being in him. And so, so as we change our thinking, that's what we want to do. Uh, in Matthew 4, 17, in the Amplified, in the King James, it says this, repent for the kingdom of God is at hand. Right here in hand. The kingdom of God is right here. But look what it says in the Amplified. And it says, from that time, Jesus began to preach, saying, repent, change your inner self, your old way of thinking, regret past sins, live your life in a way that proves repentance, Seek God's purpose for your life, for the kingdom of God is at hand. Do you hear what that says? Change your inner self. Not out here. I'm going I'm to wash my face. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to comb my hair. I'm going to church. I'm going to put my Christian smile on, and, and I'm going to dress up nice, and, and I'm going to look like a Christian today. No, it's in here. It's in here. I, I'm going I'm to live for Jesus, and, and it doesn't matter who does it. Somebody told me that they, had, they got saved. They'd been saved for three years. They were doing Bible studies. They were just on fire. And their wife said, listen, it's time to quit serving Jesus. We're going back to partying. And after counseling with them, I'm like, oh, my God. I went home to my wife, and I said, just so you know, and I know you'd never do this, but just so you know, if you ever tell me I got to quit serving Jesus, we're through. Because it's God first, then my wife, then my children, then my job in church. But it's God first, and it's God first always. And so, so uh, we change our inner self, uh, your old way of thinking, regret past sins, live your life that proves repentance, seeks God's purpose for your life, for the kingdom of God is at hand. Listen, this is what he said. Change the way you think because I brought the kingdom with me. And unless you change your perspective on reality to a kingdom perspective, you can be this close and not have it. The Holy Spirit's in this room. He came with you, Christian. Are you acknowledging him? I mean, he's as close as, as, as in your hands. He's on the inside of you. And the reality of him being on the inside of you, people say, well, I don't know about that Holy Spirit stuff. You better draw, that's what it says, prove the will of God. Prove it. And, and, uh, and, and go after God. And let God be your friend. And, and he wants to help you. And he never leaves you nor forsake you. And, and your wife may leave you, your husband may leave you, your kids may get mad at you and go off and do stupid stuff, but God never leaves you nor forsakes you. And he still hasn't changed his mind, no matter how ugly you think you are, he still hasn't changed his mind about you. He has good thoughts about you. He has a plan for you. And you can live your whole life and never step into the plan, and it's right here. Matter of fact, it's right here. But it's at, it's at hand, and we have got to, to, to let God come alive on the inside of us and stir in us and be led by him and learn to fellowship with him. Let him be real. Because, you know, our, 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 our thinking is God's up there and we're down here and I'm just trudging out life and I hope I make it to the end. Mm -mm. That's not what God's called you about or talked to you about. 
And, and most, most people repent enough to get forgiven, but they never change their life enough to walk in God's presence daily. That's where he's calling you. It's, it's, there's a purpose in, in the Bible when, in Genesis when it says God came down and talked to them daily in the cool of the day. You need a cool of the day. Whether it's the morning, evening, night, and noon, where you're fellowshipping with God. You need that cool of the day. You need that time where you're fellowshipping and change your thinking. If God's for you, who can be against you? If he sent his son to die for you, what good thing will he withhold from you? Nothing. There's no good thing he'll withhold from you. He's backing you. He's for you. But what we do is we look at how people treat us, how our mama treats us, our daddy treats us, our, our teacher treats us, and calls us stupid, and you'll never get that. You'll never understand that. Your thinking's all jacked up because people have spoken, but you're not listening to what God said. you got to transform your mind. I want, I want God's thoughts. If God be for me, who can be against me? See, see all these scriptures that are coming up? Because I speak to myself. Because I've got, a, I've got these crazy thoughts that come on, nobody likes you. You're bald-headed, your breath stinks. That's why my hair's falling out. And, 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 you know, all these crazy thoughts that come through our mind, nobody. You know, matter of fact, I, it was somebody, a, a pastor that talked, somebody came up and said, pray for me that I quit having these horrible thoughts. He goes, I'll pray for you, but it ain't going to change. you got to take care, care of those thoughts because i got the same crazy thoughts. We all have these thoughts that we have to bind, control, get a hold of them and say, that's not God. Okay? Not at me say yes, amen, or oh me. I know, I know, I know it's different. It's different, but we're talking about repentance and, and changing our, our thinking. And, it, it, you know, it's repentance from dead works to the kingdom of God. Come on, are you heavenly minded or earthly minded? Well, you don't know what they said about me. Man, I, look at all the knives in my back, what they said about me. What does it matter in the light of eternity? Lord, you know, when I get to heaven, I ain't going to be talking about all the bad things people said about me. I'm going to be like, thank you, Jesus, I'm here. Huh? Why does it matter when you start thinking about eternity? The thoughts. Come on, our thoughts should be godly. Our thoughts should be God, the God kind of thoughts. Hmm? What does God say and what does God want? You know, the, the world uses it as positive uh, thinking, um, you know, people need life, uh, life coach. Man, I've had, I've got, I got life coaches. They're called pastors, I call. And, and there's nothing wrong with having a life coach. But listen to me, the Holy Spirit's the greatest life coach. And the Word of God is the greatest motivator. And God wants His Word in your heart so it'll come to pass in your life. That's how this thing works. If you look at Mark 4.4, 4, that you, you plant the Word in your heart and it grows and it produces. And so, as we look at these things, uh, we, we want to dig into to what God said. I want to show you, let's, let's look at a different perspective, okay, than where you're sitting right now. Physically, you're sitting in this church in Ephesians 2, 4. It says, but God who is rich in mercy, thank God for his mercy, because with his great love, which he loved us. Everybody say, God loves me. Somebody watching online say, God loves me. Because of his great love, which he loved us, verse 5, even when we were dead in, tr in trespasses, that's sins, he made us alive together with Christ. For by grace are you saved. Isn't that cool? Verse 6, and he raised us up together and made us to sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Did y'all catch that last verse? And he raised us up together and made us sit together in the heavenly places with Christ Jesus. How's the view from up there? How's the view from up there? You don't ever look from up there because you look at from where you're sitting. But we're supposed to have a heavenly view of things. He's raised us up. But we trudge in the muck and the mire. I do too. We get down here and we're walking through the mud and it's, it's tough. It's trouble. Look at what our country's come to and, and all these politicians and everything. Yeah. 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 Quit it. Where's your heavenly view of who you are? Well, you talk to a teenage girl. Well, I don't think I'm very pretty and I don't know. Or then people go to the other extreme. I know 
I know what I am. I'm a man. And I'll knock you out. You just, that's your flesh. You're trying to make you, you, you're putting on a show, trying to build yourself up, and you walk around with a chip on your shoulder, and, 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 and same, same difference women too. But listen, our view should be how God sees us, and we have to change our perspective that we're seated in the heavenlies with Jesus. And, and, and we put so much stock in, war, uh, th- yeah, we need to pray, we you better vote. Go vote right here. Okay, let me see. No, no, yes. Quit looking at all that personality. Be led. Got to be led. But that's your God-given right as an American to vote. Not saying that, but I'm saying we need a heavenly perspective. Right here. I don't tell you who to vote for. You best be led, though. And, and we got to be led by who, we, who and what we vote. But we got to be led. Our perspective needs to be heavenly. That, uh, that we're, we're in heaven looking down and we, oh, we need, you know what? That's not godly. Instead of griping, how about praying? No, oh, Washington, I, I speak life over you in the name of Jesus. Russia, I speak life over you. China, I speak life over you. Holy Spirit, go. Angels, go and camp about. Bind the powers and principalities that are trying to rule over Washington and over our state and over other states and whatever. You know, you need to be praying for California and New York because that's where most of this stuff comes from. This, what, the enemy has a stronghold there and, and, and stuff starts developing. It may not show up here for seven years, but it's coming. And we, what, what's happening at the border is coming. It's already, right, three weeks ago it was here, right here. And so we, got, we have got to learn to pray from a heavenly perspective and not like, give me a gun. Just give me a gun. Well, you might need a gun, but you led. But you need to pray. And we need to change our perspective. That, and, and your prayers make a difference. Well, I, I don't know, Pastor. It's, it's your prayers. that No, it's your prayers, too. That's called F-A-I-T-H. Faith in when you say and when you pray. That God will move on your behalf. I'll give you the greatest example. This hurricane season's coming. We don't talk much about hurricanes in Virginia, but you know what? Florida, Louisiana, Mississippi, they're talking about hurricane season. And here's what happens. The news amplifies it. This is the worst hurricane. Did you hear? That's the worst. The Weather Channel says the worst hurricane. And what we're doing is we're building up the worst. Instead of, no, Father, in the name of Jesus, just cause that thing to disintegrate and go out into the Atlantic and turn away from America in the name of Jesus. But yet, everybody goes, it's the worst one coming. You're using your faith in the negative. Your thinking's wrong. You don't have a heavenly perspective. And if you think God sends storms, that's a problem too. Jesus calmed storms. Do you think him and God were fighting? He goes, I only do what the Father tells me to do. I only say what the Father tells me to say. That storm was sent to destroy him. You don't think a storm, a hurricane could mess with our economy? You don't think it'll mess with and kill people and, and change and destroy lives? That's why we need to learn how to pray and, and learn how to take a stand. Number three. Let me say this while you go into number three. Things like consistency with God's Word, we, that's what a transformed mind does. Let me, let's talk about real quick, before we go to number three, some qualities of a transformed mind. Let me say this, because I wrote some things down that will make you more effective and fruitful for the kingdom of God. Are you ready? How about consistency with the Word of God? Every day, one scripture. I don't, you don't have to read a chapter from the Old Testament, New Testament. It's awesome if you do. Let's get one scripture in our heart and talk about it all week to ourselves. We're going to talk about talking to ourselves before we get over this. You need to be talk. The, the, most, the most successful people on the planet talk to themselves. It's when you get in trouble is when you start answering. But you need to be talking to yourself. I'm a child of God. I'm an overcomer. I'm more than a conqueror. Today, God's going to help me be successful. That's okay. Just, just tell you. But, but listen, you need to be consistent. You need to be loyal to God's word. 
No matter hell or high water, God is still God. And I'm going to trust him. We just sang it. I don't care what problems come down the road, I'm trusting God. I got my shield of faith on. I got my helmet of salvation on. I am trusting God. Faithfulness. Come on, be faithful. Same thing and we'll, is this, tenacity and endurance, long-suffering. I'm going to endure. Paul told Timothy to endure as a good soldier. Well, I don't want to fight. You better. You better fight for your kids. You better fight for yourself. You ever been on an airplane and they, before they take off, they said, if this oxygen mask drops down, put your mask on first and then help your child because you're going to pass out in about 15 seconds trying to help your child put their mask on. Get your mask on so you don't pass out so you can help your child. Put the Word of God in your life so you can help your children walk in the Word of God. When they see you be able to, anything comes down the road and you take the Word of God and say, you know what, we're taking a stand and I'm putting my faith up and you know what, we're going to endure this. We're going to endure as a good soldier. We're going to fight the good fight of faith. That's a scripture. I don't want to fight. Better learn how. Because this is, this is the battleground. You're no good, you're no good, you're no good. Oh, man, every song out there written, it's, it's coming against you. She just started liking cheating songs. What? Think about it. I'm on a highway to hell. Really? Huh? Is that really your destiny? No. Be careful what you hear, what you watch. Number three, I'm sorry I got off there. A renewed, renewed mind is always changing to grow. If you're not growing, you're stagnant. God wants you continually growing. I'm hungry to grow, to grow, to grow. Well, you're the pastor. If I wasn't a pastor, I'm still going to grow and want to grow. I need to grow in the things of God. I need to grow in what God has for us, what God has for me. And we need to be hungry to grow. And, and uh, so, so back to Romans 12, too. The last of it says, and I had you say prove. A renewed mind proves the word. That you might prove what is the good, acceptable, and perfect will of God. Where does that come into play? Now, I can find in the Bible that God wants you to be his child, that God wants you to be successful. I can find in the Bible that God wants you seated as I've already read in heavenly places. But what about who you marry? You need, to, you need to ask God. Because once you get married, you marry. It matters who you marry. I've seen many a man in ministry or a woman in ministry not be able to do ministry because they married the wrong person. Not that they wasn't a good person, but they didn't want to do ministry. A good friend of mine, his, his wife left him because she didn't want to be in, church, in ministry anymore. And he couldn't do it. He tried to, you know, to restore the relationship, but she said, no, forget it. The world called her name. Come over here and party. Uh-uh. And so, so we have to prove the will of God. What, what job should I take? What school? All you young people in here, what, what, what do you need to take in school? Do you need to go to college? Do you need to go to a trade school? Man, trade's going up where you can make some money now because nobody wants to fix a commode. Nobody knows how to fix a commode anymore. You got to be trained. And once you train, you can charge $100 an hour. That's what they charge. Oh, I didn't know that. What? Quit. I got to quit. Listen, this is where Jesus said, pray, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. The will of God is that a man find a wife, he finds a good thing. But you got to make sure that she's the right one for you or he's the right one for you. That's just an example. But what about I need to change jobs? What about you need to go back to that job? What about uh, uh, this step? That's that. How about this house? Do I need to buy this car? Just because you got the money to buy it don't mean you need to buy it. You might want to just let me pray on this a minute. Because, you know, that's the thing about sales. They want you in your emotions. You smell that new, feel that leather. Well, that's baseball leather. Oh, yeah, and your note's on it. Now that you want it, your note's only 3000 a month. Yeah. Okay, I still don't want it. you you got to be in the spirit, not in the flesh, and know that's how you, you want to prove the will of God. You want to keep your feet on the ground and follow God in every decision in life. 
To, and, and this is why you, you got to renew your mind instead of, oh, I got to have that new car. I got to have that new car. I got to have this house. I got to rent this. This is, uh, you know what? You pray about an area. Uh, 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 so, so God will give you, the, God will give you godly desires about a job. I'll give an example. My wife w- w- went to school to be a school teacher, and she goes, you know, I-, I want a job at this school. It was the number one school in the county, or it's a parish in Louisiana. And I said, all right, we're going to pray about it. Father, we just thank you for favor. You direct your steps. But any job will pay. It all pays the same. She wanted a job there. She went and, and signed up to be uh, her do a student teaching there. And the favor of God was on her, and they came to her and said, listen, We'll hire you while you're in school, and this lady's on maternity leave. Will you take her place? She finished out the year teaching kindergarten. She thought she wanted to teach kindergarten until she taught it, but she's qualified to teach any level. But but she student taught under fifth grade English, and that's what she wanted. And God opened the door for her. They offered her a job because she was already there, and the favor of God was on her. She couldn't go in there being a slouch. You got to go in there ready to work. You want to raise? Work. Show up early. Stay late. Oh, I know I'm cussing. I'm sorry. Work's a cuss word. Don't let work be a cuss word. Remember whining? Is you wanting to feel good before you do anything? No, go in there and work work for somebody and prove yourself. And, and, and guess what? They'll open up. They'll, God will give you favor, and they'll open up the winds of heaven for you. Increase will come. That's how this thing works. Well, I'm, uh, I know people are like on the couch, changing the channel. It's coming. It's going to be in the mailbox one day. No, it ain't. Change comes when you get up and start applying yourself to the word, the word of God. And the word of God will tell you to go out and work. Yeah, I'm sorry, I'm cussing again. I'm sorry. But we need to prove the will of God, and God will direct your steps. And guess what? He'll make work fun for you. Where you don't feel like getting up and going to work, he'll make it exciting. He'll make it, the, you, you'll turn the worst job you thought you had in the best job you thought you had. Because it's called God's perspective. Thinking. Your thinking's wrong. Listen, our reality needs to mirror the kingdom of heaven. Hmm? And any reality that does not mirror the kingdom of heaven is an inferior reality. That's hard. So sometimes my marriage doesn't is not a kingdom reality, but I have to work on it. And I've been married 40 years or more. more. And I still have to work because I'm dealing with her and she's dealing with me. And if I don't, if I get tired, I get, you know, it gets ugly, if this thing's happening. You're dealing with people, but you maintain your walk with God, and you always go back, i got to change my thinking. We just got through with marriage on the rock, and you need to take that course. I don't care how old you are, how long you've been married. You need to take it every two years. And I've taken it 15 times, and I still go, ooh, I'm still not doing that right. Because it's a godly perspective on how to be married. And, and they, they, you go back, and you say, our thinking is by our parents. I said things, I'll never be like that. And doggone it, I'm like that. Because that's what I was influenced by growing up. And, and, and we, we are influenced by things in it. Are, that's what the Bible calls uh, um, iniquities. Things that are wrong that you were raised in and your thinking's a little bit warped. Bent. And it's not that the devil is possessing your family but, but, but once you walk around bent and you think this is normal, the devil doesn't have anything to do with you. You're just walking around with wrong thinking. And, and you're bent over doing, you know, with wrong thinking and you don't think you'll ever get ahead and you don't ever think because nobody loves me. Nobody cares what happens. No, see, and we have to straighten up and start thinking to God's thoughts. I hope you all are listening to me today. Because a surrendered mind proves the Word of God. To prove the word of God. When you want to change and you want to submit to God, then when you submit to him, that's when you start changing. See, when you surrender to him, okay, God, you're thinking. 
And oh, it's hard because you want to do it the same old way because you've got a little bit of success and you know what? You, you hit it a time or two, but when you get into God and you change your thinking, you start doing it his way. It, the, you think the devil's going to lay down because you, gee, the devil came to Jesus, y'all. That's next Sunday. We're going to talk about the enemy and wrong thoughts and how they come and where they come from. The devil came to Jesus and said, oh, you think you all that in a bag of chips? You think you all that, Jesus? Then do this. Jump, jump, jump off. Jump, jump, jump. Huh? Your father will catch you. Thou should not tempt the Lord your God. We're going to do it God's way. Listen, we're not just supposed to die and go to heaven. We're supposed to bring heaven to the earth. We're supposed to be successful, godly people to where people go, I want to be like him. I want to be like him. What does he have? What does he have that I want that? I want the Jesus you've got. How, 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 did, how, how did you get that Jesus? <clears throat> Let me say this. This is, this, is, this is from the Spirit of God. It's time to quit living in the moment and start living for eternity. Because everything that we face in this life and everything, when we stand before God, remember I said he asked some questions. <clears throat> what did you do with my word? What did you do with my spirit? But a lot of times we live for the moment. I'm not going to help them today. I'm just going to stay home. <clears throat> I'm not going to pray. I'm going to watch TV. I'm not going to do this. See, we live for the moment. What feels good to our flesh, what chills our mind, instead of doing kingdom business. Going and doing when you don't feel like it. Praying when you don't feel like it. Getting that one scripture when you don't feel like it. Put that scripture in your heart. Live by it. Walk in it. It's eternity, and eternity starts now. We're in eternity. But this life is not the one that matters. It's the one that starts when we die. So let me ask you. I want you to bow your heads today. Do you know Jesus as Lord and Savior? Is he Lord? Is he Savior? We want to follow him. We want to live for him. He died for you. And what your part is to accept him and to accept his way of life. If you don't know Jesus, if you've never prayed and accepted him in your life, will you lift your hand real quick and say, I want to accept Jesus. Is that you? I see your hand. Anyone else? Maybe, maybe you've been living your own life and it's time to start living for him totally and completely. Is that you? You want you to make that commitment. I see your hand, your hand. Shoot, that's my hand too. I always, I'm always striving to do the will of God. Let's pray this prayer with this person that raised their hand, these others. Pray this with me. Say, Father, I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. And I give myself to you, Father. Through Jesus, I receive the forgiveness of sin. Today, I become a child of God. I'm a new creation. Today, I'm born again. Thank you for saving me. In Jesus' name, amen.